Hello, sir. And welcome to the Detroit Auto Show, the proud home of the American automobile industry. How many tickets do you require? Uh, two tickets, please. Certainly, sir. That will be $80 billion. Hello, this is Gareth Jones on Speed. If only you could hear the filthy jokes we were just sharing over that theme tune. Uh, <laughs> I suppose I'm going to bring it back to normality, really, and tell you that for probably this entire programme, we're going to talk about an extraordinary bit of motoring technology, which Zog and Richard have spent perhaps half an hour or an hour driving. And I've spent three weeks driving over the last few weeks. The Lexus LS 600H, or as I prefer to call it, the Axiom from the movie Wally. Have you seen the movie Wally, you guys? Fantastic. Man. No, except if that you bit that you showed me earlier on when you were trying to show me something that was relevant to this, yes. <laughs> I, I will go and see it, though, because it looked really good. The reason why I think it's like the Axiom is that the Axiom is this sort of ultra super scientific giant vessel of the future in which you don't really have to do anything. You just sort of turn up and it does it all for you. Because this car does it all for you. It, it will even park itself for you. But I'll, I'll come to that, that in a moment. That was the really spooky thing. And, well, yeah, yeah, interesting subject. Yeah, I want to talk about that last of all. But first of all, guys, you, you, your first impressions of the car. You've driven lots of comfy cars, both of you, nice cars. What do you think of the uh, Lexus? I thought it was fantastic. Wonderful luxury barge. The, the really mm. interesting thing was it was so quiet, I realised after we'd been in it for about you know, a couple of minutes that Richard and I were both whispering. <laughs> when we were talking to each other. We're it's driving. true. It's, I mean, it's what happened. It is it's, so it quiet. Really weird. And we it's were, absolutely uncanny. And then, because we didn't have the stereo on or anything, and then it's a cold night, so we cranked the heater up, and once it had reached a certain temperature, it started trying to get as much hot air into the into the cabin as possible. And so the fan was making a bit of noise. And then I turned it off, and then it all went quiet. And as soon as it turned it off, it was like, I was like, yeah, I mean, it is quite nice, isn't it? Because it's because it's got really good seat. Oh, why are we whispering? Again? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Driving around in a library. My it's party trick, because I had it over the Christmas New Year period, it was to go up and visit relatives in North Wales, and then say, right, we're just going to pull away now. Just uh, have a listen to the engine. I wind down the window and I drive off. And the great thing about it is because it's a hybrid, the LS600H is a hybrid. For the first up to sort of thirty miles per hour, it's the electric motor that powers it. So you roll away. Utterly well, silently. See, now I'm not sure about that because when we moved off, yeah. It, yeah, it depends how harsh. I yeah, just, that's true. Oh, if don't... you floor it, the motor will cut in to put a bit of extra power to get you going forward. But the electric motor will produce up to something like 200, 200 brake horsepower, I believe. The electric motor will. Its combined power is over 400 brake. Yeah. Mm. And what I like doing because it's got all these readouts, these screens. It's like the, the big giant screen that's your sat nav and your entertainment and all that to the left but it's also got a little one in between your speedo as well mm. and there's a mode you can select what you want in there and it'll tell you whether it's charging how much power is going from the electric motor I suppose the Prius has got the same thing kind of, sort of geeky boy stuff basically. yeah mm. yeah and you can have oh you can, it'll tell you what the current MPG is it sort of averages about 24 which I think is pretty good actually for a car that weighs 2.8 tons and with the performance that it has yeah <laughs> yeah performance rough more on that in a moment but one of the things I like was it, it tells you how much power the electric motor's drawing as well and I never saw it top out above 75 kilowatts I don't really know what that means but at least I've got uh, a reference now I, I used to know the equation for this but yeah that's quite a lot yeah that's it was right, interesting because yeah. I, th- I think the argument for it being a hybrid first of all Again, like driving that Tesla before Christmas around the West End, you know, not having to pay the congestion charge. Driving a big V8 Luxo barge around the West End without having to pay congestion charge was very satisfying. That's an interesting thing because, as you say, with it being a hybrid, it's going to uh, be exempt from the congestion charge. It, it, it is exempt. Well, it is, yeah. They're repealing that, though, aren't they? Well, I think they are, which is, which even, is even smart even because if the point... To, because it's, it's, it's nonsense. If the congestion well, charge is, as we now know, essentially a, a tax related you, yeah. to CO2, then by dint of it being a big car, there's only so much that any technology can do, and it does emit way more CO2 than, say, a Fiat Panda or something, yeah, right. which is not exempt from the congestion charge. Yeah. But it's complete nonsense. And even Ken Livingstone, who knew nothing about cars and was basically but an idiot in that Is it field. congestion charge or is it a pollution charge? Well, that's the yes, argument, or is you know? It, it, I mean, that's the thing. It's, 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 it's unclear. But anyway, I, I think that's being repealed and, and probably 
makes sense to do that because basically Livingston and his transport advisor just you stick a hybrid badge on, on, on anything and he'd go oh that must be good then you can come in for free without really understanding anything about it so yeah. oh, but speaking of loopholes when are they going to close that loophole that has to do with with people being able to register just about any car as a mini cab and oh I think they're clamping they... down on that because they got well, yeah they realised that yeah. you know, if you've got a Mercedes SL you clearly weren't a mini cab <laughs> And the if you were, could you come and pick me up later? Because I'd like to go. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Pre-booked only, it says yes. in the rear window. <laughs> it's the, the, the stats for the LS600. It produces 219 grams of carbon per kilometre, yeah. which is about the same as Big Pit, I believe, in, in the Big Pit in South Wales. Well, I, I think 180 grams is about the average for a UK car, isn't yeah. that right? Yeah, Run so for something yeah. that is a big, filthy V8... And I mean filthy well, in the nicest way. You know, mm. it's using the hybrid technology to get that extra performance without too much extra mm. carbon cost. Well, and, yeah. and to recover I mean, energy. in fairness as well, that all these CO2 figures are calculated on a standardised uh, test, which is done during, during the homologation of a car. And I would presume in the same way that the Toyota Prius hybrid is, is set up, it's, it's sort of optimised in such a way that it shines in the standardised test to give it a headline figure. That's not what it will be putting out all the time. And here's something that a Renault engineer told me recently, that when they're doing these tests, they make sure stuff like the wheels are facing perfectly forward. And in, yes. the, in the case of the uh, Renault Laguna Coupe GT, which has got four-wheel steer, <laughs> the rear wheels as well, because even turning the mm. steering wheel draws a certain amount of power. Yeah. And well, also because something about the uh, Tesla we were talking about in the last show, uh, the Elise on which it's based has a certain amount of camber on the wheels because yeah. that's better for handling. Yeah. Mm. And the Tesla has absolutely none, runs absolutely zero camber because that means that the tyres are sitting absolutely flat to the road surface, which means minimal friction. As uh-huh. little friction as possible, and it's all about reducing the friction to make it more efficient. Uh, so, yeah. They lower play, rolling uh, resistance. Lower resistance. <laughs> Try saying that with my lisp. So, yeah, the, the, I mean, <clears throat> I do, I, this is the thing. What's great about the Lexus, well, Zog and I just took it for a little run around here, was that it is an unbelievably comfortable and quiet car, and it just it, it does what all great luxury barges should do. It just soothes you, and the ride is, is excellent, and it's incredibly quiet, and not just because of the, the, the electric motor. I mean, we were, the V8 was running for pretty much the whole time that we were driving it. Yeah, get, 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 get when it little... finally cut out, when we came to park outside here, yeah. and the rev counter suddenly dropped to naught. Yeah, because a Prius, which I've driven quite a lot, doesn't have a rev counter, so you you you, you only know the engine's cut out when you suddenly realise it's got a bit quieter. But with that, which is quiet anyway, you suddenly see this beautiful electroluminescent rev counter just go, boom, and you think it's stalled, and it hasn't because it's just it's just gone to electric power. But otherwise, it was running on the V8, and it's still incredibly quiet, as Lexus always have done with their big LS. I mean, uh, it, limos. I, I thought always very quiet cars. One of my great impressions of, of it was simply that it was you know it, it was a great pleasure to drive mm. rather than being a thrill to drive, if you mm. like. But the, the other thing was because we we faffed around for quite a while at the very end, try, I faffed around for quite a while at the end t- trying to park it because we thought we'd give the automatic parking feature a try because it has the this uh, Lexus parking assist. They argue yeah, it's which, not automatic parking. They say oh, it's there to help you park. Don't rely on it completely. Yeah, I don't know. It's it, it's it, it's pretty much ghost parking. You know, yeah. you, you know, you you take your hands off the steering wheel and you take your foot off the brake and it parks the car. Well, now, yeah. well, well, this is the yeah. And <laughs> we, we we spent quite a while sort of trying to figure out exactly. How to get it to work, well, and you, you actually half st- an hour. Didn't <laughs> <laughs> well, you went quarter of an hour, maybe. We did reach into the glove compartment. The manual came at the six hundred page manual came out, and we were under. No, that was just because I wanted something to read while we tried to get the <laughs> computer. To work. But there's anyway, another name for that system, which could be called independent dynamic uh, innovation of turning. Or idiot for sure. <laughs> because basically, if you can't park a car, you shouldn't be driving. That's right. No, yeah. absolutely. And as Although, it turns out, the Lexus can't park a car because it took us half an hour to get it to park. So no, I, I, that, that is one uh, innovation too far, I think. Well, <laughs> let's be fair because I, I was actually quite impressed because after a few minutes, I was thinking, okay, this is a bit rubbish. Any system in a machine like a car, a familiar everyday machine, you should be able to just figure out how to use it. You shouldn't mm. have to look it up in the manual. Yeah. As far yeah. as I'm concerned, yeah. I, want, I want to be able to figure it out for myself. And after a few minutes of faffing about and sort of not getting it right and not figuring out how to get it into there, uh, yeah, we were, I was getting a bit frustrated. But then it clicked and actually it then was quite intuitive and without any help from the manual and with only the help of to be fair Gareth pointing out which button it was on the screen you had to hit to sort of put it into automatic parking mode yeah. it was there completely was no, intuitive I, yeah. ma- I managed absolutely to figure out without any further assistance you know how to tweak 
on the TV screen in the middle with the touch controls how to move the target area that the car was going to move into. Mm. Can I paint a picture? And, you know, it... Uh, it worked. I was. I was can I, work. Very can I e- explain? If because if you haven't seen the car, you won't know what we're talking about. You get the media screen to the left of the driver. You normally have your sat nav in there. However, you put the vehicle in reverse. I say vehicle because I think it's more than a car. This thing is one of ship <laughs> spacecraft. The system in reverse. The system into reverse, and it shows you a picture from the parking camera, which is situated just underneath the number plate in the rear of the boot. And what this does, it then looks behind, and it's a perfectly good picture. It's lit by the reversing lights of the car, so it's a lovely video picture. But when you reverse it normally, it gives these guides. It shows the guides of roughly how you should turn the wheel to park. It's amazing that it does that. But then if you go into parking assist, you get these two little graphics. One is on the bottom left, there's a graphic of three little cars in a row, and you select that to park into a parking slot. Or the other one is three cars end-to-end, and you select that to park into like a side street sort of thing. And that was what Fox, you guys, you didn't think that you had to press one of those to get it to tell you what to do. Mm. And then when you select those, it then overlays over this video image a parking bay a sort of yellow or red or green parking bay red it's not big enough to to park green yes yellow there's a little corner thing watch out for this little flag that sticks up and you then you stretch this wireframe with your fingers by touching the screen so it shows you where to park press the okay button and then you just lift your foot off the brake and a ghost takes over the car exact ghost parking Mm. it turns the steering and parks you in reverse into the slot correcting and leaves you there it's just a bit weird. It, it is, it is quite it's great. It's a novelty, it's and it's quite amusing to show off to people. But yeah. I do think, as I said, if you can't park, yeah. even a big car like that, yeah. I mean, really. And also, oh, even when you know how to use the system, it takes a lot of fiddling around, tweaking that wireframe to get it to, yeah. to exactly the space you want to go into. Yeah. And by which time, on a busy street, you'd have irritated... A hundred yeah. people queuing behind you yeah. in the city centre. So it is. I think it's a novelty, and it's an amusing novelty, and some very, very clever processing power and stuff has gone yeah. into it. But ultimately, just silly and pointless. Although when it's most useful, and actually, to be honest, this is this is one of the reasons why, if you remember, I wanted to give it a try because mm. uh, it was the first time I'd driven that car. Um, I just stepped out of a much smaller car half an hour earlier, and any time you get into a new car, it takes a little while to get used to where the edges are and yeah. just how that car feels, how it fits around you. Yeah. And so when a car is unfamiliar to you, sometimes you can use the assistance to do a neat job of parking, even if you're a pretty good parallel parker in the first place. Do you know what happened? And I could remember this as well, earlier on when we took it out, we went to try and park, and... First of all, the screen had got these neon green and yellow lines on it. Yeah. There was a lot of exhaust smoke coming out yeah. from the tailpipe. Yeah, twin. Yeah. And the, the road behind was also being lit up by the brake lights in yeah. red. It basically looked like top of the pop. <laughs> I went to Zog, don't back up now, you'll run over Limal. Yeah. <laughs> Phil Oakley nearly stepped out with you know, a couple of girls from a Sheffield disco in the background. <laughs> Introducing the brand new 2009 Red Bull, featuring the unique automatic parking feature developed by me, David Coulthard. Yes, with David Coulthard F1 Auto Park, simply press a button on the steering wheel and your Red Bull will automatically park itself in a gravel trap on lap 3. Coulthard Self Park. See it soon in Formula 1. Unlike me. Oh God. <laughs> Petrol with Gara Jones on speed. Aye. Auto parking in a Lexus LS 600. I have to say, I know we think it might be one bit of technology too far, but I think that's because we're blokes. Because of all the people I talked to about the car, it was the women who were most excited about it parking itself. Seriously, what? yeah, really? it's true. Women, oh, really? Oh, I could really do with something. They all, to a to a man, to a woman, they all said the same really? thing. Most yeah. girls oh. I know are better parkers than men. Well, I, th- I, I don't, don't buy that. At yeah, all. I do admire a good bit of parking. I have to say, I think yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's very be. satisfying when you do a good bit of parking as it, well. well I think. I'm ashamed if my wheels are more than about four, four or five inches from the. Sometimes curb, I'll know? get out. And have locked the car and then go back and redo it because I, otherwise it'll just Good nag laugh. away at me. Yeah, no, I, do you know what I, I like to do? Outside this house, we've got parking bays. Mm. I always make sure, if I'm at the end of the bay, that my rear wheels are right up to the limit of the yes. bay yeah. and with the body overhanging the bay, 
and letting other people maximise the use of the yeah, base. Exactly. Yes. Yes. You know, that happened to me the other night, actually. I, I got home form. and I pulled into the road down sort of the bottom of Rye Road because we have sort of parking bays as well. Because I'd driven past a space big enough for two cars, two normal sized cars. Yeah outside my flat yep. I'd gone to turn round in the road because there was a car behind me then I realised the car behind me was one of my neighbours in a Corsa it's always a Corsa <laughs> idiots buy Corsas <laughs> and she pulled so I saw she'd stopped and then reversed back into the space and parked slap bang in the middle oh. of it oh. with half a car's length Right. Either end. Buy her that's, a Lexus LS six hundred. That'll yes. park itself. No, I'd just had a kill. Yeah, Good easy. idea. I asked Violet to say a few words on the program. Violet, will you say hello to the listeners? This is your first appearance in two thousand and nine. I'm going to speak. Happy New Year, listeners. Thank you very much. It's a bit late for that now. Darling. It's TV's Violet Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just hang on? I've got to do your little. Oh, what? Do my bell. There we go. And Violet usually rings the bell in the door when she walks in to let us know that she's here. Um, v, uh, you spent well three weeks, like I did, nearly in that Lexus LS six hundred, and a very comfortable three weeks it was too. I, we were thinking of just selling the house and buying three Lexus. <laughs> That's what our one kids each, suggested. Yeah. It but, is actually nicer than my flat. It is. <laughs> it's a bit like travelling first class in Virgin Atlantic. I think that, seriously, because the rear seats in the car recline as well. Mm. And we've got two children who are only little, but they could really spread out the back like little executives and read the Beano and watch the DVD in the back. It's got back. electric curtains in the back as well, it's hasn't it? Which I don't know anyone's curtains. house who's got that. Yeah. So it is, in yeah. so many ways, nicer than a house. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't joking. Did you, you, did you like it as much as okay. I did? <laughs> this is what I thought of the Lexus. The official girl review from Violet Berlin. Well, the passenger review, because I didn't drive it, I yeah. passengered in it. Yeah. What I thought was, when I first got in it... I thought it was very excited, the idea of having this, like, super computerised, almost sentient car that yeah. could park itself, heat your bum when it was cold. I do that usually. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> uh, entertainment. You Excuse me, can you talk about... He- Stop <laughs> that now. I'm losing my thread. It was really clever and it had all these different sort of snow modes and this mode and that mode and, and oh, you know, what could we press next? And after a while... And actually, especially after we attempted the park yourself mode, I decided that even though that was kind of the selling point, all those sort of surprise and delights, that was just sort of like 2% of how great the car was. What was really great about the car was that you just got in it and you felt cosseted and you just felt like you were flying first class on an aeroplane and you were just really comfortable and it was smooth and it was quiet and actually, you were just listening to music, and then you appeared you, wherever you were going. You, this is, but this is pretty <laughs> it's a much great way like to time travel. travel. <laughs> it's a really great way to travel. This but is what you, Violet said about curtain. the Sora when we first got the the, the Sora some nine years ago. Now, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. It was still pretty new, and you described it as a hundred and forty mile per hour listening booth on ice. I remember that's what it felt like in comparison to what we've been driving previously. It went. And with the sound and this did the same thing mm. you know except it was 155 mile per hour on this occasion and I'm the sure sound was that. even better mm. but and who is Mark Levinson who created the stereo in that car I've never who is he Zog you know so he's a, he's some a, hi-fi guy no he's a, a, that he's pundit a, bloke off Match of the Day isn't he with that funny thatched roof hairstyle <laughs> I know nothing about football I, I don't know I think that might be Mark Lawrence he did a good oh, job though didn't he V oh no it was the sound was amazing the, well. the, the, the ride and you couldn't even put your finger on why it was so good because we've had a few nice cars recently and I'm generally not that bothered I'll be honest but yeah this was the, the the bells and the whistles were kind of okay and fine but the ride the comfort level but you know you'd, we would expect that from an £80,000 car wouldn't you it's a lot of money you'd, well, you'd expect it to be if I may this is my problem with that car mm. £80,000 it's a lot it's a lot yeah. of money, it's a lot yeah. money. now you know you do get what you pay for in mm. the same way that Virgin Upper Class is what I don't know five grand a ticket to go to LA uh, you sort of think well th- three and a half grand I can't remember what it is it depends when you yeah. go doesn't it but it's expensive yeah it's a lot oh, more than oh, economy can, yeah. can I just tell you this is the best example of exactly how good that car is yeah. it's Christmas day we're due at my sister's for Christmas dinner and like 12 other people all waiting for us to turn up for Christmas dinner yeah. we leave late and then Gareth's forgotten his something and then we have to come back and then we're, so we're even later with all these people and it's Christmas dinner and then we decide, even though we know the way to my sister's, to use a sat-nav to get to Brighton. Oh, oh. 
And the car takes us three times in a loop around Whitechapel. True, <laughs> true, true. And we're really relaxed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true, absolutely true. We're like going, oh, haven't we? That's the gherkin again on the right. <laughs> Shouldn't we go the other way? Yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> and the sat-nav was truly dreadful. I mean, it, 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 really? would, it would oh, say right. congestion right. was up ahead and it and wasn't. wasn't. Yeah. But after taking a loop three times, it's a congestion. It's a bit well, well, the sat nav in my Mitsubishi does that. Yeah. Right. Sat-nav is, okay. and it goes, but it tries to be helpful, like a sort of irritating hotel receptionist constantly knocking on your door going, <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you like some more tea? Would you like some more tea? No! <laughs> um, and, and it goes, oh, there's congestion up ahead. Would you like me to reroute you? No. There's congestion up ahead. Would you like me to reroute you? No! Yeah. And the, the other thing I think my sat nav does is it won't tell you to a city centre. It certainly won't take postcodes, which I think the one in the Lexus does, doesn't it? Like uh, most we, yeah, uh, yeah, actually yes, works yes, pretty well. Yes. This one, no postcodes. No, just take me sort of generically to this village of three houses. It goes, yeah. yes, for the street. give me a road name. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah go, I don't to, know yeah, the road yeah, name. I'll have yeah. to look it up. Or you go, all right, here's a road name. And it'll go, haven't heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> You're I'm describing a West Country accent here for some reason <laughs> to make it sound more simple, but yeah. it is basically... Okay, the, so thing, you... the thing you realise with Satnav after you've you know, lived with it for just a little while is that you have to treat it not as an authority, not as something yes. that you obey. You advice. have to treat it as, <laughs> yeah, as advice. You know, it's like having, I don't know, a slightly autistic small child in the car who probably knows the way, but you don't want to absolutely rely on them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had that this morning, in fact. I had to get from Birmingham to Coventry. Now, that's pretty simple. There's a road called the A45, which I dimly remember to just go straight between the two places. But I, I had my, t- my, my tom-tom because I don't trust the, the sat-nav in the Mitsubishi because it, it'll go, Coventry, OK, I've not heard of it. And, <laughs> um, and so I thought, I'll take my tom-tom and that's fine. I said, put in Coventry, please, in a specific, a specific area and road, uh, postcode, and, and brilliant. But it started taking me back towards London for a bit. And so I thought... This isn't right. I'm sure this isn't right. I'll turn off at the next motorway junction so I can have a proper look at where the hell it's trying to take me. Mm. Turn off at the next junction, had a look, and I said, oh, yeah, no, it's, it's like, I'm going to take you to Coventry. That's fine. And then I realised it was one of those weird motorway junctions where you can come off but not go back on again. <laughs> oh. And so then I had to go, please reroute me. And I was like, you win this time, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> it took me twice as long to get there in the end. Yeah. I was late. <laughs> Never we were talking about Alexis, though, weren't we? Right, but yeah. so, no, so what I'm hearing then is that if this sat was truly dreadful, it was only as bad as all the other well, sat yeah, maybe. maybe but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't kind of amazing. But actually, we didn't care. We no, just we didn't, didn't we care. And Gareth kept trying to take people on lifts everywhere while he had the car. It was, Strangers, I was, homeless. Well, yeah, I, was, I was saying, no, honestly, I'll get the tube to Hammersmith. It'll be quicker. No, it's all right, you know. No, Who Gareth, else really, needs to go? I said New York. You know, <laughs> <I'm trying. laughs> yeah, that ride to Hammersmith, we were in Glasgow at the time. No, <laughs> honestly, it won't take long. Uh, listen, uh, thank you, V. Thank you very much. Um, a couple of things I want to talk to you about, um, uh, talk to the boys about, because um, I know you want to say something about the cost of the car. Car. Hold that thought. Yes. Um, go on, tell me now. Go on, tell me now. Tell well, no, I was going to say, I think uh, it, uh, I'm going to start summing up without your permission. <laughs> Do so. Yeah. Whose so. name's in the title of the show? <laughs> Daniel Porter. <laughs> anyway, no, I, right, I think it's a, a fantastic bit of work. I've always quite admired those Lexus limos, and I know that they get a bit of stick because they're not a Merc or a Jaguar or a BMW, but I think they're actually coming into their own. And, I mean, the quality of it, that sense that everything will keep on working, because Zog and I were looking at it, and we were looking at the little button on the door that it does your height-adjustable seatbelt. Now, I mean, yeah. frankly, that's unnecessary. Yeah. It's a nice touch, but unnecessary. And Zog went, oh, this is just more stuff to break. And I said, yeah, it is, isn't it? And then I was like, well, actually... It probably Although won't break. That's, that, that's, <laughs> anything that's else. That's what you think if you've owned an Alfa Romeo. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But no, anything else, even, I would say, a, a modern Mercedes uh, or a BMW. Everyone thinks the Germans build impeccable cars, and, and you know, sadly, they don't. Their reputation actually yeah. exceeds the reality. JD the Power says otherwise. Yes, yeah. actually, I would more trust the Jaguar in that respect. Yeah, yeah. I, the Jaguar always do very well in those things. Yeah, but, you would trust the Lexus in that respect. Yeah, oh, completely, yeah. completely, yeah. completely. Yeah. And we'll talk about this in another show, but old Lexus LSs are impossibly cheap now, the, the first generation ones. And every so often, I have a little wobble and think, oh, I might buy one of those just for fun, because I, I love a barge. And, uh, and since my Rover went, I've, I've just I've always have a little hankering for something with super poi bride hmm. and an automatic gearbox and I looked up the known faults with old Lexus LS's and it's oh sometimes the front wishbones might need replacing and sometimes the climate control display fades and you have to get it replaced 
That's it. That's it. No. no. Look up the known yeah. faults for a 15-year-old 7 Series. Right. It, Give it, yourself an hour or two to yeah, go through yeah, it. Yeah. Or even an S-Class, you know. And it's not just that, yeah. but it's sort of when things go wrong, they're going to cost a fortune. Now, the thing yeah. is, if they go really wrong in a Lexus, it's going to cost a fortune, but they just yeah. really don't. And they're So true. I love the build quality aspect of it, which is a terribly geeky thing to say, and I love the comfort of that car. I have a few problems with it, though. First of all, £80,000, I just think, is it's a huge lot. money. Yeah. And you would start to think, well, hang on a minute, but there is that S-Class, and it's... Very nice, and, oh, Jaguar XJR, ooh, they are good, aren't they? Yeah. Now, well, my point is, I think if you fancy the Lexus, don't buy a 600 hybrid. Yeah, I get think the it's smoke and mirrors. Get the, yeah, 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 get that one. You get a bigger boot as well, because exactly. a lot of the space yeah. is, is turned over to the yeah. battery pack and the motor, so you lose a lot of Because the space. second thing is, I think this hybrid thing is essentially bunk. It's, it's a nice idea, but as Zog and I were talking about this before, it does make it a big limo more efficient and and yep. faster it's called a 600 because it's got still the same 4.6 litre V8 but they reckon it gives it the performance of a 6 litre car yeah. mm. because of the electric motors it's five, However, li- 5 litres 5 litre oh, V8 is it? yeah it's oh. a 5 litre but it, it, they, it gives you the research. power of a 6 litre V12 oh, okay. it really does Yeah, it's one louder <laughs> <In a way. laughs> yeah. so that's fine but I just think, well, that's one way of supposedly achieving efficiency. Now, you, you worked out you did what? Over the Christmas period, you got 24 miles to the gallon. Yeah, yeah, average. Uh, which, considering at a large proportion of that, I timed my driving where the traffic on the road was pretty quiet. So yeah. I was driving not at the corporate average fuel economy efficiency of 50 or 60 miles mm. per hour. I was driving at... Uh, Don't oh, incriminate yourself. Yeah, You're driving warp, 70 miles an hour. I was driving at warp 0.7. 70 miles an hour. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So... I, in, in very similar circumstances, going a lot on lightly traffic motorways, bit of city driving. About two years ago, three years ago, yeah. I had a Jaguar XJ8, the 3.5 V8. Oh, yeah. um, black one, was it? Big for black? the black? whole of Christmas. Yeah, uh, it was a blue one, that one. I can't remember. Oh. Um, and over the course of a week or so, that averaged almost 28 miles per gallon. That's very good. Because it's light, that's the thing. Yeah. The Jag, nothing clever about it, particularly in terms of the powertrain, but it's just yeah. got an aluminium body shell, and it's a lot lighter than any of the other cars of that size. And although it looks like something that's owned by the National Trust, it's actually a fantastically sophisticated yeah. car in the way that it's put together. And yeah, 28 miles per gallon. Just from being Colin Chapman theory, which I always think is what the Lexus Add approach is, yep. they've added weight and complexity, yeah. mm, and the Jaguar yeah. approach, as it turns out, is just is, is add lightness. And the complexity is worth thinking about because, you know, I know we're saying that Lexus build fantastically well-engineered and very reliable cars, but a big, complex, powerful hybrid powertrain has more things to go wrong in it and has more things yeah. that require maintenance than either an electric or a conventional yeah. petrol Yeah, but I think uh, but get, get the 460 and you'd have a very pleasant yeah. luxury car and uh, get mm. the 460 in 15 years time get one for £1,500 yeah. and you will have a deeply satisfying lovely well, car that still works I, I, I guarantee I, it I, I, and I can personally guarantee that I've got a, a 15 year old Lexus and it gets better when things go wrong with it. It heals itself. Really? <laughs> I'm serious. I'm well, actually, that, serious. Because actually, you know, we bought an old Lexus LS for Top yeah. Gear, and James May turned it into a police car. Yeah, and he, I remember. He uh, he really wanted a Lexus for some reason. He decided it was funny. So because you can't go and buy a car because they go as that bloke off the telly suddenly treble the price. So yeah. one of the searchers went off and, and bought this car and came back, and uh, then we we shipped it off to our mechanic who checks over cars to make sure they're okay. And he rang us up. Specifically, just to go, that Lexus that you just sent me, I can't believe it. We've just been out in it. I mean, all the lads went out from the workshop. It's brilliant. Everything <laughs> works. It's mm. amazing. Like, all those, usually those horrible cars you sent me that you've paid £700 for, they're always awful. This is great. And then James got in and went, wow, I'm so pleased with this. And then we used it, a lot of stupid stuff on the track, and then it went and it sat and rotted in a yard for a bit. And then they used it at the Top Gear live show, and, and, and uh, that was how James May made his entrance in his stupid police car. Lovely. I was at that show, and I said to James, uh, how's your Lexus? And he went, do you know what? It actually feels better than ever. <laughs> it's like it, it was it healing healed. itself. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. they do. I know you wanted to talk to us about some fantastic new Jaguar things. Well, here's the thing. You have to be quick because we're really running out of time. Right, well, yeah. I'll just just a few headlines because this on. is the thing now yeah, I was talking about before about Jaguar XJ8, efficiency through lightness. But probably the weak link in that were those old V8 engines because they were old tech. Yeah. So there's Previous a brand new 5-litre yeah. V8. Now, it's sort of not really in tune with the times there's also this new 3 litre diesel which actually has some extraordinary power and torque figures is, and that, is that a Ford engine technically that 3 uh, litre well, diesel well no it was done by mainly by Jag up at Whitley and okay. with in association with Ford because they have the diesel experts in Dagenham right 
And also, uh, Peugeot chipped in, but basically they did? just money they, uh, to fund it. Oh, really? And now it seems like this is the new three liter version, and basically it's a, it's almost a new engine. There's not oh. much carried over, and Peugeot aren't going to take it because they're moving back down to four cylinder engines because they're you know more yeah. by speed six diesels than yeah. Peugeot. So yeah, it's got sequential rather than parallel turbocharging, right? And it's got in terms of like matching, they benchmarked against the BMW 530 and 535D, mm-hmm. and it, it beats them in power and is better in emissions and all the rest of it and things like that and the V8 is the same the V8 has some extraordinary stats attached to it because they've gone on this quest for efficiency to make the engines finally match the aluminium bodied XK and XJ that they've been making for a few years so they're just an obsessive quest to get rid of friction and so the 5 litre supercharged V8 which just sounds like the worst kind of engine to launch in these Crunchy yeah. credit times and probably is but god bless them they haven't worried about that they're engineers they've gone on and engineered the best engine they could and in, in every sort of headline stat it's got as much power as a mercedes yeah. amg engine 6.3 in most Crikey. tunes and the bmw m5 v10 oh. and yet, way lower emissions and also uh, one of the things that jaguar are obsessed about is making a car jaguar like so it has yeah. to have low down torque yeah mm-hmm. which is yeah. something that lexus is blessed with yeah so they showed us all the torque graphs and all the torque graphs just go vroom, right from zero sort of right up almost like a tesla just sort of massive <laughs> sort of spike of torque at 1500 rpm that then just sort of levels off into a lovely plateau so you know the, the way that people really drive they put data loggers in ordinary Jaguar customers' cars to find out how they drove, and then came back and went, oh, they all just, like, you know, low-down talk. So let's Wait, when that. can we have one? They're in the shops um, in March, aren't they? Yeah, I think they start in March. Yeah, they've started, they've started making them now. And the most exciting car that supercharged V8 goes into is the XFR, which it just looks like an XF, but sort of that's been on some kind of gym course. And <sighs> I mean, it looks and nice. Started, and the best thing, the, the one thing you need to know about that is that I'm obsessed with... There are a certain sort of things that a Jaguar should have, and one of them is that you should be able to order it in a very dark paint, maybe even black, and have red leather seats. Oh. And and they've always started doing that and then stopped doing it because no one no one really bought it. Well, I, I you would I would I, yes. And the it's good news good is the XFR they showed off to us was black with red leather seats. Oh, well I almost had a little gentleman's accident in my trousers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it there. I think I look forward to having one of those soon. Can we have um, Jag's number and we'll, we'll order one of those? <laughs> yeah, there's a queue. <laughs> That Lexus has this intelligent adaptive cruise control. Yes. You set the speed, mm. and then it measures the distance of the car in front, and you can set it three different distances, like five car lengths, six car lengths, or two car lengths. So I set it to five car lengths maximum. I've been back and forth to Derby several times the last couple of weeks, and set the speed, took my foot off the accelerator pedal in Derby. Really? Yeah, and put it back, I put my foot on the brake, if I didn't put my foot on the brake because we came off the A4 or whatever it was because if the car in front slows down it slows down, it slows down too mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. and so my kids in the back were saying dad who's driving the car now he said well it's that bloke in the metro in front <laughs> <laughs> he was controlling the speed of our car yeah, occasionally it would get caught out by major bends in the motorway and if someone changed lane quickly in front of you it would suddenly break mm. but that's no bad thing but, oh, these, these kind of systems we should go out better, well, you better. can't now because you've had a bit we yeah. should go out and try this on a motorway because what I discovered with a uh, Mercedes is that if you're charging along, if you suddenly nip in behind a truck on the inside lane, it will do a full panic stop. Yeah, it's quite it exciting. Yeah, it will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sort of, oh, exciting. God, what's going to happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Do you remember that bit of black and white footage? I can't remember who it was. Buster Keaton or someone like that. or who was Harold Lloyd. Harold Lloyd, I think it was. He had a little car that was the shape of a bullet with wheels on it, and he had a giant cardboard magnet. Yeah. And he would hold <laughs> his magnet out like this. A car would drive past yeah. and it would pull him along. That's what it felt like in the Lexus. Like all these cars were just pulling us along. It was incredible. <laughs> And it will also work if the car in front stops, so will you. Oh, is it like the safety system? Yeah, it'll do it, it, right it will stop. Zero. Yeah. Oh, cool. And so we arrived at this roundabout, the car in front stopped, and we just stopped. And the car in front pulled away, and the car didn't move. It's like, oh, hang on, why? Oh, I've got to do it, of course. <laughs> You've got the action to drive. <laughs> so, fellas, say goodbye. Goodbye. We're going to leave you with a piece of music inspired by that Lexus LS 600H and indeed any car of the future, particularly the line, my car's automatic, all I have to do is be here. Here's the computer in my car. This has been Gareth Jones on Speed and I was Gareth Jones. Goodbye. Technology, but 